Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and today is finally the day that we are going to be testing out some of these recipes that have come in subscription boxes. I am so excited. I hope that you are just as excited about this video as I am. For this video, I have selected four different recipes. I'm going to try to get through all of them today. I don't want this video to be super incredibly long, so that's why I wanted to just, just start with four and kind of see how it goes. I also chose recipes that are a little bit more on the simple side to make sure that, that I'm able to do them in this time constraint. But since it's a brand new way to film and a brand new type of video for this channel, I wanna kinda of get it down a little bit before I start bringing in some of the more difficult recipes. The four we're gonna to do today are the Sugar Blitz Cupcakes. This recipe came in a Once Upon a Book Club box, a more recent one, in fact, I think the latest one. The next recipe we're gonna try also came from a Once Upon a Book Club, but it was way back in January, so it was maybe from the January box of 2022. And this is a bread recipe, which I really wanted to try because it's called soda bread. So it's a bread that you can make without having any yeast. And I was really fascinated with this type of recipe. I've heard of bread like that, but I've never tried it myself, so I'm excited to try it today. The next one came from a Smart Ass and Sass box, and this is oven baked fruit leather. It seems to be pretty simple, but it will take a very long time to do, so it's the one we're gonna start with, actually. I was excited about this one because if it turns out really well, this will be something that my kids can throw in their lunch boxes this next week whenever they go to school. And then the last one we're gonna do came from an unplugged book box, and it is the Sherbert Mimosa recipe. And I was very excited about this one because I love mimosas, but I've never tried to make mimosas this way with sherbet. Usually I make them with just a frozen can of orange concentrate and you add water to it so it's just orange juice and champagne. This one seems a little bit more fancy and I'm curious to see how it compares to the regular way of mimosas that I'm used to doing it. I'm trying to get it all worked out so we can be as efficient as possible. We're gonna start with the fruit leather. That'll go in the bottom oven. Then we're gonna work on the bread. I thought about doing the cupcakes before the bread, but there are a couple of ingredients in the cupcake recipe that have to be room temperature. And I just got back from the store, so I'm gonna let those sit out for room temperature. And by the time the bread is done, that should be ready to go. So I think that is the plan we're gonna go with. Let's start with the fruit leather. I think this setup is okay. I've got some kind of light coming in. Let's just move on. The first thing I'm gonna do with the fruit leather is preheat the oven to the lowest temperature possible. The lowest mine would go was 170. The next thing is to add all of the ingredients into a blender and smooth them. So I guess we're gonna be creating our own puree. Let me get my blender. Ooh, this blender was dropped on the floor a while back, so it does have like a shattering, but it's still technically intact. And I haven't actually used this part of the blender in a very long time. Usually I just use the smoothie cups in the blender. So hopefully everything stays together. Just now realizing that I should have had all that ready to go before I hit play. I'm back. It turns out I don't have honey. And the only thing you need for this recipe is a pound of strawberries, which I have already cleaned and taken the tops off. You need a teaspoon of lemon juice and a tablespoon of honey and I cannot find honey anywhere. We did have a little bear with honey, and it's gone. So I don't know if my husband used it all or if it just got misplaced, but all I could find was maple syrup, and I looked online, and I guess it can be used as a substitute because the honey is supposed to be just a sweetener. So we're gonna try it with the maple syrup. I don't know how it's gonna go, and this recipe doesn't turn out quite the way it's supposed to. I'm gonna go with the fact that we didn't have honey and that's why, and not because it was a bad recipe. I'm just gonna squeeze a bit of lemon in here. Sorry guys, I feel like I am still so unprepared. I'm not used to filming in here, so I didn't have everything prepped. I didn't have everything ready, and now I'm just kind of running around all over the place. All right, nice, good tablespoon. And then that just has to get blended up. And then we have to pour it on a silicone mat, which is what I'm gonna use, this is a silicone mat. And you could also use parchment paper.
spread the mixture evenly. Give the tray a little tap to help spread it out and then remove air bubbles. Okay, it looks pretty good. Bake four to five hours until the center is no longer sticky. And I'm gonna check it at four hours and if it's not done, we'll cook it that last hour. And then after that, you just cut it into strips, roll it in parchment paper so that the leather doesn't stick together. And then enjoy. In the oven we go. That one is simple enough. Hopefully it works out with the maple syrup replacement instead of honey. I am so sorry guys. I even looked for honey at the store and I could not find it. I don't know, it's like I looked for it but I knew I had some at home and then turns out I didn't have any at home. Next recipe, the soda bread. This one is also really simple, only three ingredients. Three cups of self-rising flour and one cup sugar and one Sprite or lemon lime soda. It doesn't have to be Sprite, but I got Sprite. You just mix the three ingredients together, pour it into a greased loaf pan, and then bake at 350 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and preheat the top oven to 350, which actually works out because that is the same temperature that the cupcakes have to be baked at after the bread is done. mix them together instead of whisking them together. So I'm just gonna put them in my mixing bowl and then mix them with a spoon to stir it all together. Pampered Chef wooden spoon here. Start with a cup of sugar. Make sure that is leveled off. And next is just three cups of self-rising flour. If you don't have self-rising flour or you can't find it at your store, all you need to do is mix one cup of all-purpose flour with two teaspoons of baking powder, whisk those together, and that'll create one cup's worth of self-rising flour. I actually have self-rising flour because I use it a lot in my cupcake recipes. This was a easy one for me to do. I didn't have to buy anything except for the Sprite which my kids were very, very excited about the fact that I had got Sprite. Because I only need one for the bread and the rest they can just drink. We hardly ever have soda in the house, so <laughs> it's like a treat for them. Don't know how this part's gonna go. bubbled up. Okay. I mean, I definitely see why it's called soda bread now. It's kind of sticky, which I guess is good. Isn't that what bread dough is supposed to be like? A little sticky, like it sticks together. It just says mix them together. It doesn't say for how long. It looks like pretty much all of it is combined, except for a little bit at the bottom. And it's so weird because usually with bread, you have to let it rise and proof, but since this one doesn't use yeast, you literally just put it in the loaf pan and then bake it. So let's try it. Doesn't say we have to smooth it out or anything. I have to stick this in the oven for about 50 minutes, it says. It says approximately 50 minutes, and we'll check it then. In the meantime, I'm gonna go off camera, clean up this mess, and then get everything prepped for the mimosa recipe, and I'll see you back soon. Ha, that was almost perfect because it's literally at four hours and 48 minutes from the fruit leather. <laughs> like that worked out almost perfect. And that is technically about 50 minutes. All right, I am back for the mimosa recipe. And this time I'm a little bit more prepared because I have everything in front of me. For this one, it is supposed to be a sherbet mimosa recipe. You're supposed to have four small scoops of sherbet sorbet or ice cream and one tablespoon of vodka, and any type of champagne with fresh fruit for garnish. I don't even have the fresh fruit for garnish. 
which is fine because I really just want to try the mimosa by itself. I mean, the garnish, you really just eat that after. I hardly ever eat any garnishes that are placed on my drinks. But this sorbet was the only one I could find at Walmart. I had no idea it was hard to find sorbet or even the sherbet brand at Walmart. The whole aisle is basically just dairy and ice cream. It's, I know there's people out there who have to be dairy free. They deserve options too. This one is a red, white, and blue sorbet. It has cherry, blue raspberry, and lime sorbet. I at least like blue raspberry, cherry, and lime. It's not exactly the flavor I was hoping to get. I was gonna just try to find an orange sherbet. That way it would be comparable to like the regular mimosas that I'm used to having. But we're gonna try it this way. Just four scoops, four small scoops. I don't know what they consider a small scoop. That looks like a pretty small scoop to me. So much for it being a perfect scoop. Spoon over here. I have not had a sorbet or sherbet in a really long time. I used to have it all the time in my grandma's house when I was young. That was probably one of my best memories, or strongest memories from when I was a kid was having sherbet in a little bowl. Actually, she had these really cute baseball cap bowls. That was like all the grandkids' favorite. There, I got four scoops in there. Next is one tablespoon of, they recommend Clementine vodka. I just had my husband pick up any vodka he could find. I didn't want, I really didn't want a huge bottle. And then he came home with this bottle and then another one that was grapefruit flavored. I was like, I just need it for this recipe. I don't need that much vodka. But I'm gonna go ahead and just do the regular one, not the one with the extra flavor. And you don't even have to use the vodka. It even says in the recipe that you can leave this stuff out completely if you wanted to because traditionally mimosas are just champagne and orange juice. I had to wake my husband up so he could open the champagne bottle because I couldn't do it. This is James, if you've never met him. He just woke up even though it is four o'clock in the afternoon, but he works the night shift, so his schedule's different than ours. And he's gonna be the one that probably drinks all this vodka. <clears throat> I hope you're happy about that. <laughs> It's a job and someone's got to do it, right? I bought, a, uh, I bought a Texas vodka. Oh, is that what it is? Actually, both of them. Deep Eddie's, the grapefruit vodka, is also a Texas vodka. I guess that's good. And the next one, it does not say how much champagne. I think you just pour it up to fill it or however much you want. In the pictures, it looks like they filled it just past the sorbet scoops. So that's what I'm going to do. And this one is Barefoot Bubbly Pink Moscato. Pink Moscato is my favorite champagne that they have. And I'm glad that I did this today because I went the other day to get this recipe and it was completely out. And the only thing they had was brewed. And I was like, mm, I'm gonna wait. And I'm glad I did because it was restocked today. I don't know how long you're supposed to let this sit. I'm assuming that you're gonna want the sherbet to melt a little bit so that it can mix with the champagne. Otherwise, you're just gonna be drinking straight champagne. which is all I taste whenever I drink it. Why don't you taste it? Do you taste any of the sherbet flavor? Yeah, yeah a little bit. It's mostly... Mostly champagne though, right? And a uh, hint of the vodka. Oh, really? Is that what I'm tasting? I mean, you can taste the sherbet. <laughs> it's been so long since I've had vodka. It's a chunk of sherbet. <laughs> <laughs> I will give you updates on this as it sits out while we're waiting on other recipes to finish. The bread is already starting to rise. It's only been in there like 20 minutes. Here in a little bit, I'm gonna start prepping the cupcakes. So I'm gonna clean up some of this mess and I'll catch back up with you in a minute. All right, I have everything ready for the Sugar Blitz cupcakes. I'm excited to try this one. It is a different vanilla cupcake recipe than I'm used to. It has some different types of ingredients and I wanna compare it because I just made vanilla cupcakes last week and this time I could make them in Hopefully still remember how the other ones tasted. Okay, the oven is already preheated to 350 and we really only have a couple minutes left before the soda bread is ready, so that's exciting too. Perfect timing. In the mixing bowl, combine the all-purpose flour, which it calls for one and a quarter cup of flour. So here comes another deviation, sorry guys. I only had about one cup of all-purpose flour left and that was it. I had to do the fourth of self-rising flour. 
So because to make self-rising flour, it's literally just baking powder and regular flour, what I'm gonna do is adjust the baking powder measurements and hopefully it'll turn out okay. Again, if this one does not, <laughs> that's my bad. I am so sorry. I was really wanting this video to go flawless, but apparently it's not. The cup of granulated sugar, that is also not the kind of sugar that I normally use in a cupcake recipe, so that was different. Baking powder, I am just doing one teaspoon instead of the one and a half, and it also wants me to add the salt. I have a half of a teaspoon here. The cinnamon, it just says a dash of cinnamon, and I really don't know what that means. So I just put a little bit of cinnamon in there. And it's weird because I never mix the dry ingredients first. I usually start with the wet ingredients. And it says to whisk it until it's combined. And now we have to add in the wet ingredients and that is a half a cup of milk that is at room temperature. It has been setting out. A fourth a cup of vegetable oil. And this is like the last of my vegetable oil too because I don't use it very often either. I usually use olive oil or coconut oil when I'm cooking with oils. Then you had to have two tablespoons of sour cream at room temperature. I've never put sour cream inside of a cupcake recipe. I have seen it done though on baking shows. So I am excited to try this recipe. The egg, this egg also had to be at room temperature, so it's been sitting out on the counter since I started this video like an hour and a half ago. A tablespoon of vanilla extract. This vanilla extract actually came from Mexico and it has been very good quality. Okay, now it says to whisk until combined with the dry ingredients. Do not over mix. That's what I'm gonna do. It is literally just combined. And it's a wet mixture. I'm not used to a wet cupcake mixture. Portion the cupcake batter into the liners. I'm actually gonna use these cupcake liners that I got in an all true box. I used them just last week and they worked out pretty good. The only issue I had was a couple of times when I was taking the cupcake out of the liner the liner ripped just slightly, but not enough to compromise its ability to hold the batter in here. Bread has been in there for exactly 50 minutes, so actually let me stop and check on that. Oh. It's really golden brown on top. It looks done to me. All right, back to filling these cupcake liners. Just stick these in the oven for 20 minutes until the tops of the cupcakes bounce back slightly when touched, and then you'll remove them from the pan and let them cool, obviously. The mimosas did get better, by the way, after the sherbet started to melt a little bit into the actual champagne. Now it's kind of a fun flavor with the mix of all the sorbets in there. I wonder what it would be like if you had just a solid sorbet flavor. It's not one that I could find, but maybe you'll have better luck. Okay, I'm gonna do some cleaning and then I'll be back later when it's time to wrap up this video. Cupcakes are out of the oven. Please excuse the noise. The puppies are out for their runaround time. Hi, Bree. Oh, are you excited? Do you smell the food? Nugget, get in the video. Where's Nugget? Nugget! Oh, here comes Nugget. Hello, Nugget. Yes. Oh, you're so excited to be called. Yes, you are. Hello, Nugget. Oh, Bree. <laughs> Nugget and Bree are the only ones left. I'm gonna start sleeping in his Ailey's room soon. Yeah. You too, Bree. a little while there's still two and a half hours left to go on the fruit leather 
but the cupcakes have finished. I have made the buttercream. There was no recipe for the buttercream for this cupcake. I just went with the chocolate buttercream only because I just did vanilla buttercream and vanilla cupcakes last week. And I wanted to mix it up again this week so we weren't having the same exact flavor profiles. I did finish my mimosa. I thought it was pretty good, but it was a little foamy. So I'm gonna try it again actually while I'm waiting on the fruit leather to cook the rest of the way. And I'm gonna frost these cupcakes. Maybe we can try some of this stuff because then I have to stop to cook dinner. Chocolate buttercream with these Sugar Blitz vanilla cupcakes. They look so delicious. Make myself another mimosa here, and then we're gonna try some of these recipes out and actually taste them. Funny enough, this cup actually came out of a Globin subscription box. I haven't done Globin in a very long time. I was thinking about doing another one just to see what kind of things are available now through their subscription. Most of the things I got in the past were kitchen related items like glasses like these, and I was like, I don't need any more. I'm gonna wait a while, see if they can come up with something else. But really, it's a pretty good subscription. I may add it to the 25 boxes of Christmas this year because I don't think I have featured it in that series yet. Bread is still a little bit warm. It's hard on top, so I'm a little worried that it like overcooked. The 50 minutes was just too long. Just cut a little slice out of there. I don't know if typically do you take, oh, actually I probably can take the whole loaf out of here, but I don't know where to put it. Where do you put loaves of bread? I guess I can put mine on a plate. Oof. All right. That's a pretty good, decent sized loaf of bread here. I don't know what to make of this bread. I mean, it tastes good. I think the issue that I'm having is that this particular bite, it tastes kind of sweet. So it's like a sweet bread. It makes me think when I take a bite and I taste the sweetness, my brain is thinking, oh, this is a good slice of cake. And then you keep eating it, but it's not cake, it's bread. So I really don't know how I feel about it. I don't know if that's how soda bread is always supposed to taste. I don't know if soda bread has specific purposes, if you can cut it thin enough that you can actually use it for bread or if you can toast it in the toaster and use it as that kind of bread. But right now it is still a little warm. It has a sweet flavor to it. Ooh, the bread. Yeah, take a bite of the bread. All right. Do you like the taste of it? Yeah. Does it taste sweet to you? Not too sweet. Not too sweet? Well, maybe it's just me. Getting some more tasters down here because after all, me and the kids are the ones that's gonna have to eat all this food that I just prepared today. <laughs> Except for the mimosas, those are for me. What do you think of the Sprite bread? So good. Do you like taste it. the sweetness? Yeah, Azalea's not a bread person, so. I don't like this one. She didn't like that one. She actually doesn't like hardly any bread at all. Unless it's Red Lobster. <laughs> Unless it's the Red Lobster Cheddar Biscuits. Okay, next we're gonna try a cupcake. After tasting the bread, I'm actually like, I'm excited. I don't want some bread. Not to mention they look pretty good. <laughs> I can taste the cinnamon in there. Oh. I like it. Considering I'm not that big of a cupcake person, like, I actually like it. Yeah, my kids are weird. They don't like sweet stuff. Oh, but, frosting. yeah, Zaylee doesn't like frosting at all. I like the cake part. Here, why don't you take a bite of just the cake part on the bottom? It's amazing. That was like a nibble. That wasn't even a bite. Can I have a try? Yeah, you can finish it, Jacob. Sorry. It's like that, but lighter. It is light and fluffy. The cupcake was actually really good, and I can taste the hint of cinnamon inside the vanilla cupcake. I think it paired really well with the chocolate buttercream. It was a pretty solid cupcake recipe. I may even use that one instead of the other one I was using, but I would definitely give that one a huge thumbs up. The soda bread I think was interesting. It did taste good. I just don't know how I feel about my bread tasting sweet. 
But I do know that there is a sweet tasting bread out there, like his brioche bread. Isn't that like a sweeter bread? It's not unheard of to have a sweeter type of bread. And the fact that you could even make this bread with just three ingredients and not even have to have yeast, that is a big thumbs up for me. The mimosas, I do like them this way. I think they're a little bit more complicated to put together. I think it's a little bit fancier. I do like the way that the champagne tastes when it mixes with the sorbet, but it does take it a bit to mix together and it can be a little too frothy. I'm undecided on that one. I think that one does taste good. I am gonna continue to drink them that way for the rest of the day, but I don't know if I'll make that recipe the next time that I have to make mimosas. I would say it was a nice try or maybe a nice option. Probably great for if you're having mimosas at a party and you wanna have something that's a little bit fancier than just orange juice and champagne, then it's probably the route to go. I think I'm going to wrap up the video here. I will cut in a video of the fruit leather whenever it's finally done. 43 minutes to go. Didn't quite make it in here four hours and said it shouldn't be sticky in the middle. Oh, yep, no, it's not quite ready yet. The fruit leather. So sorry, it's a little bit darker for the footage. It's already nighttime, I'm already up in my room. The fruit leather took forever to make. I didn't even let it stay in there as long as it needed to. I pulled it out at five hours and I was able to get good fruit leather along the sides of it, but the middle of it was still not done all the way. You can tell here when I like poke it, my finger was still poking it and it just was not done. And I don't know if that was because of the maple syrup consistency compared to the recipe was supposed to have honey. I was able to successfully roll up several of these and the rest of it probably would have cooked up if I had left it in the oven, but I was tired. It's been a long day. I just wanted to finish the video. So I am gonna try a little bit of this fruit roll up for you guys. Looks like this. It almost looks a little bit like bacon in this light, but it's just a strawberry fruit roll up. It's a pretty good fruit roll up, I guess. I think for convenience purposes, if you want fruit roll ups and you don't care about the ingredients that are in it, just get the boxed one at the store. This is obviously the healthier way to go so that your kids could have fruit roll ups, but it is very time consuming. Well, no, it's not time consuming. It's a pretty simple recipe. You literally just blend up stuff and stick it in the oven and basically forget it. The problem is that you have to be around while it's cooking and you have to make sure you pull it out when it's done. So it does take a long time to make it. That's the biggest downfall for me. It is still a little bit tart. It probably would have been sweeter had I had the honey instead of the maple syrup. But overall, I would say it's an okay recipe. It's good if you wanna have a healthy snack for the kids, like a healthy option for the kids. But I don't know if it's really worth all of the trouble to make it on a regular basis. Those are just my thoughts on it. <laughs> Back to me. Let me know what you thought of this video and the recipe trying from subscription boxes. Do you wanna see more in the future? I'm excited to do more in the future. Please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below, and I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Bye everyone.